have a confession to make. Can you can you guys keep a secret? I figure a pu public YouTube channel is the best place for that, right? I love Madoka. It's probably my favorite anime of all time, and that's because it kicks fucking ass. There be spoilers from here on out for both Madoka and Magi Record, so you have a fair warning. Make sure to alt tab to furry TikTok or whatever if you want something more tasteful to watch. I also really recommend watching both or either Madoka or Magi Record before you watch this video, because I talk about the universe kind of like you would know it, so you might be a little lost if you don't have these shows inscribed onto your back like I do. Shout out to my homies. Merrick from Yu-Gi-Oh. This is not going well. Monoka is a show that took pretty much everybody by surprise the first watch through. The marketing was an absolute lie and pretended like everything was all hunky-dory, you know, until... Well, you know. It's a clever satire of the magical girl genre that deals with some pretty heavy themes like, you know, obsession versus love, the karmic value of humanity, and of course, the death of a friend. Monoka, first and foremost, is a show about hope versus despair, and despair is this constant lurking presence in the show, reminding the characters that even though they have these fantastical powers, it doesn't mean that they're free from the shackles of what it means to be human. Death, misery, head rolling. <laughs> this, is, this is gonna just go on the whole damn video, isn't it? Now, what I found so compelling about Madoka was the way it handled its characters. There's a main cast of only five, and that's cut down to four within the first three episodes, and it's lowered to two characters remaining in just the last several episodes, which gives it a very tight narrative focus. The show is about its characters. Each character goes through a, a pretty significant arc, besides, I guess, arguably Mommy. This is really, really the greatest strength of the show. I cannot emphasize enough how well this show handles its characters. And that's why I'm not really going into too many spoilers for that. I highly, highly recommend you watch the show. Each character interacts with the main five in a different way. Each character has their own motivations, what it means to them to be a magical girl, what it means to, you know, fight for their friends, why they made their wishes. All of it's very well written, very, very well written. Shout out to my homie Genorobuchi. The show in total had 12 episodes with a, two movies summarizing the show and then a third sequel movie, Rebellion. But I'm just going to be focusing on the main 12 episodes of the show versus the 12 episodes of Mangi Record just so they have an even comparison between the two. Mangi Record doesn't have a movie yet. Yet! Now I can gush about Madoka. Madoka. Madoka! Now I can literally gush about Madoka all day long until I irrigate the fucking Sahara, but let's go ahead and transition here to Magi Record because it's kind of the point of the whole video. Did you read the title? It's got Magi Record right in it. <laughs> At least it should! Magi Record is a mobile game based on the Monoka universe, released on Android and iOS in 2019 in America. It follows Ido Hatamaki and her search for her missing sister, Ui, who seems to have noped right out of reality along with any trace or memory of her besides Iroha's. On top of that, every single witch is migrating towards a city called Kamihama, and there is a rumor that if magical girls travel to Kamihama, they can become saved. Honestly, I really like the mobile game. All five original members of the Monoka cast are present, and it's nice to get more information on their backstories and motivations. And a lot of the new characters they introduce are honestly pretty cool and well-written. Shaft clearly cared a lot about this adaptation. There's great art, animation, and a killer fucking soundtrack that just rocks my tits like an earthquake in the maternity ward. Oh my god, just listen to this. Oh. Ah. But I don't like Magi Record the anime. Honestly, the way that Magi Record the game has been handled, I don't really see any way of translating Magi Record properly into an anime. This is for a lot of reasons, but I've highlighted the main three points of my argument because that's easy to understand and I'm a hack. Number one, reduced slash non-existent risk to characters. Iroha is established early on as being a weak, rather useless magical girl who is sternly told by Yachio that she's going to get herself killed if she stays in Kamihama. Witches in Kamihama are said to be stronger and more dangerous. However, despite this, currently in the game and anime, so far every single cast that wasn't dead before the game started is present alive and pretty much unscathed. 
The main five cast is not cut down at all like it was in Monoka, and I'm not even saying that you need a death or two to establish urgency or convey danger to the audience, but it is rather jarring that every encounter they have seems to go off without any lasting impact on the main cast, especially when danger and the truth of what it meant to live a life of combat was so heavily emphasized in Monoka. At the moment in Mangi Record where I expected the danger when Iroha was about to turn into a witch, it was instead subverted into an explanation that magical girls can't turn into witches in Kamihama, and that they instead release that despair through doppels, essentially mini witch forms that cleanse a magical girl's soul gem. One of the main threats to a magical girl's safety is that they turn into witches when they feel enough despair or run out of grief seeds to purify their soul gems. So Magi Record actually removes that huge threat right from the get-go. And in the mobile game, this actually makes sense. After all, you cannot have a character die in the story only to have them show up in your party because you have them acquired. And you can acquire and use every single magical girl in the game. I suppose you could delete the character entirely, but that would piss a lot of people off since there's an upgrading mechanic, and if a character were removed, you could theoretically lose a lot of materials. First and foremost, Magi Record is a game about building and upgrading your favorite magical girls into a good team, and this mechanic of removing the danger to focus more on a character building sort of script works great for a mobile game. It doesn't work very well for an anime. Adapting a script like this into a show that is supposed to contain real danger would require a pretty significant fundamental rewrite, and if they did that, the show wouldn't really be Magi Record anymore. Speaking of… two. The character roster is insanely large. The main character roster is insanely, insanely large. Well, we're talking, we're talking tits on a, on a pregnant elephant large. That just, woo, cut, cut, cut that. Woo. <laughs> now I hear you saying, I can hear you saying already, but Magoka had five main protagonists and so does this game, which means they're the same. Yes, yes, this is true. But in addition to the five main protagonists, there are so, so many other characters. In addition to the five main protagonists, there are four main antagonists that get pretty, pretty significant screen time. You got uh, Tsukuyo, Tsukasa, Mifuyu, uh, Mami. There are also the three other antagonists, the main three of the Magius, again, spoilers. Uh, there's Toka, Nemu, and Alina. Uh, the show also features the three allies to the main five, uh, Rena, Kaede, and Momoko. There's Mitama, the coordinator who runs the shop, and the best girl do not at me. And then you have Nanaka's group of five. Five is even briefly shown in the anime. Kyoko and Sayaka also appear to support the main cast, as well as obviously Mami being mentioned before. So, you know, there's a lot of characters to juggle here, and that's not even mentioning the, the one-offs that haven't appeared in the anime yet, like uh, Oriko and Kirie, uh, Ashley, Mayu, all that kind of stuff. That's a great thing for a mobile game to have, especially a very story-heavy one like Monkey Record. Each character is unique and they have three separate stories you can uh, read for them that typically tend to go into why they became a magical girl, what their motivations are, and their relations to other characters. The vast cast also ensures that you won't get bored because you can switch up you know, your team whenever you want, you can use different characters in combination with each other. Each magical girl has something called a connect, which is a different uh, buff she can give. So you can build a sort of, you know, different style team if you, you get bored. And it's all in all a pretty clever design for a mobile game. I mean, it's no surprise that having more characters in your game means that you have a little bit more diversity in your play style. And Magi Record is, is different in the sense that it doesn't skip on the characterization for any of them. Some of the girls connect even has different abilities when combined with different characters. Uh, for example, the twins, when you match um, Tsukuyo with her sister Tsukasa, she gets an additional buff. You know, it's pretty, pretty clever organic game design. You want characters who know each other to be able to interact. However, when it comes to the anime side of things, it doesn't take a genius to know the more characters you get, less characterization you get to have. There's a limited number of screen time after all, in a character-driven drama like Magi Record, the massive amount of story with only 12 episodes to deal with means that the characters are spread thinner than a crap single in a windstorm. Rena and Kaede's friendship ending arc has like two whole episodes to work with. They do the Owlwater arc thing in like three, and then it's off to the memory museum for the end of the show where 
the majority of the story is, admittedly. Now, if you're playing this in the game, I'm, and I'm being somewhat generous here, if you're playing this in the game, that takes about 15 hours if you're rushed, and like, 20 to 25 if you're not. There is a lot of story in this game. You know, to cut that down for four hours means that they took some goddamn garden shears to that thing. There is so much missing. This means that a lot of the attention that had been given to the characters in the game, like Iroha and Yachio, Yachio spends a good majority of the first portion of the game just warming up to Iroha while Iroha gets to know Kamihama and all the characters in it, and it's, it's taken quite well but all of that is just completely dropped in the anime, which gives their characterization a little bit of a convenience factor. You know, Iroha and Yashio just get along because, well, they have to. Madoka and Homura are also in the game, but they are not present in the show, which is a little odd, because Kyoko and Sayaka are there and so is Mommy. Why? I don't know. Number three, the story is too long to adapt into a 13 episode anime. I know that they just announced a second season, but the sheer amount of story in Mage Record is impossible to adapt into an anime, unless it was like 200 episodes long. <laughs> Especially because in the mobile game, you get to choose the amount you interact with the story. Each character's story is optional, you get to play an additional story following the main five protagonists from Madoka as they interact with Kamihama, there's also an additional layer with the story called the Mirror's Dungeon on top of seasonal events with their own stories. This makes Magi Record as a whole an incredibly rounding experience, since you are given the opportunity to approach the story from all angles. They drop clever hints in the story if you go out of your way to learn about the characters as well. For example, let's take one we all know, Kyoko. In Kamihama, Kyoko was taking care of a young magical girl named Yuma, who became a magical girl at only 11 years old. Kyoko feels a personal responsibility as she doesn't have a family and takes almost a maternal nurturing role to Yuma. In the regular story, this is referenced by Kyoko being a lot more caring in comparison to her role in Madoka. Kyoko also thanks Iroha for helping out Yuma with a witch fight in the main story, and then carries Yuma home on her back. There are a lot of moments like that in the main story which reward you for going out of your way to learn about the characters. This just doesn't translate to an anime, because, I mean, first and foremost, an anime is not an interactive experience so you can't include elements that allow you to learn more about the characters without just directly characterizing them. It also means parts of the main story simply cannot be adapted, as people wouldn't know what's going on without the inclusion of those other characters, which would require the show spending already some of its incredibly short runtime on those characters. All in all, with the experience I've had with the anime, which isn't a bad experience, I just don't think it works on a conceptual level. I haven't said anything positive yet, so I'm gonna do that real quick before I just completely bury myself in this. <laughs> the Sana introduction arc was handled pretty well, um, and their AI stuff was was pretty good. Uh, I like how they portrayed Alina, even though I desperately, desperately wish she had more screen time. The transformation scenes for each character were fucking spot on. And honestly, I think the show's pretty well animated too. You can kind of see the budget kind of popping out of the seams a little bit there, but you know, it's Shaft, they do a good job. Shaft is, is a great animation studio and you can really see, you can see their love. And in case you don't know, I know I haven't really talked that much about Monica, but we're gonna go right back to it. Uh, in case you didn't know, a lot of Madoka, and same with Magi Record, is animated with a mixing of styles. There's traditional 2D animation, and then most of the witches and the rumors are animated in a more 3D, almost paper mache, stop motion kind of style. It's really nifty, it's really, it's really quite sexy. And I can't recommend enough looking at both of these shows. They really are, they're quite beautiful. Yachio was handled relatively well, relatively when in, in categorized here. Yachio was handled relatively well. She definitely got the best treatment out of the whole main five besides Sana. And, and you, you know, she's given the most screen time. They have the whole ending song dedicated to her. They did a pretty, they did a pretty good job with her. Soundtrack is still kick fucking ass. Uh, Yuki Kaijura can have anything in my house. Anything she wants. That's about it for the positives. The show's execution has been pretty, pretty subpar. It's like, Okay, it's like if you were building a car. All of you know how to build a car, right? That's, that's really where my main core audience lies, in, in car builders. And you built, you built a car frame, which is the beginning portion of it, and then you polished it up really nice, you stuck some bows on it, uh, you hired a violinist to sit on top of it in their lingerie and play Vivaldi, 
and then you entered it in the race. And everyone was like, wow, that car looks really fucking great. But it ain't got a damn engine. It's not gonna go. You can't get to somewhere for as gorgeous as you look, Shaft. I will not stick my dollar bills down your panties. It, it's fundamentally a flawed adaptation. And because of that, I'm always going to recommend the game over the show. If you really, really, really want to engage with Mage Record as a story, the best way and the only proper way to do it is through the game. Anyway, I've probably rambled long enough. The anime is still worth your time. I want to say that. It is still worth your time if, you, if you're a Madoka fan and you want to watch it. It's not a bad, bad show. It's not going to put you to sleep. It's a good show. It's just... Mage Record as a game is just far better. So... Anyways, let me know if you want to see anything else in the comments below. I got a couple of scripts brewing. Uh, anybody remember Magical Girl Raising Project? Uh, that's all you get for now. I, I, here I am acting like anyone cares what I'm going to be putting out in the future. Uh, <laughs> bye! And each girl has a different ability called a connect that allow- Lucy? Loud complaining from you. What do you need, babes? Oh, she wants the key. She wants the microphone. Here, come here, girl. <laughs> That's what she said. Okay, okay. Hi. 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 Don't, 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 don't. <laughs> you, you see, you see, no. What are you doing? What are you doing? Huh? I was in the middle of something, yes. <laughs>